Yeah, here I got a special, special guest, Gina Geneva. She had a lot of requests. I did a little video with her, and so I'm going to give you what you wanted. Here's your request, Gina Geneva, nokfabin.com. Hello, everyone. Here I am. I have a few questions for Hunky Tonk Man, and the first one will be, uh, I heard you have two independent movie projects coming up. Can you elaborate on those? I just finished one in uh, Chicago, and it's called Executive Ranks. I don't really know what it's all about or have not seen the final cut and final product. Uh, it's uh, produced and directed by a, a pretty good independent, independent film director, uh, John Wesley Norton. I have another one in the works in Denver where I'm going to be like a sheriff or a bodyguard of, of some zombies or something. So, okay. you know, I, I'm always out there trying to look for something new and different. And, and uh, there's no boundaries out there, that, that no ties that bind me to not <laughs> doing whatever I do. Cool. Which means anything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what other projects you're involved in besides wrestling? Well... Gosh, uh, I've done porno pro wrestling. Interesting. Uh, and I was not. Yeah, I was not in, in. I was not the porno guy at all. I was only. I only did commentary with two very, very, very professional ladies out of L.A. and out of the porn industry. One was from uh, Budapest, Hungary, oh. uh, Rita Faltiano, and the other girl was Shy Love, who is. They were both, they've both been in over 400 films, extremely professional, but after about two or three hours, and we were on the set for 10 hours that day, I was really tired of watching uh, two porno stars. But uh, I had a wonderful time doing that, and I've done multiple, multiple, you know, gen strip clubs, gentlemen's clubs, where I have been a guest referee for nude or wrestling. Uh, <laughs> That's nice, man. I have been a guest uh, MC for ladies' nude jello wrestling. Mm -hmm. I I did one in uh, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, several years ago, and I created this particular match, uh, and it's been one of my best creations. It was a, a, a dildo on a pole match. So the, whoever the girl was who got the dildo off the pole was able to use it for 20 minutes on the other girl. And there was a lesbian shower scene, which was not, I thought it was very creative. Uh, we had uh, 2,000 people for that show at 30 bucks a head. Amazing. I would yes. love to go to one of those yes, shows. I would love to go. Uh, it, wow. was, it was out there, on, it's been out on DVD. It was called Spew. Oh. Spew. Yes, it was sexual. No, sexy, professional, exotic wrestling spew, That's which I thought was called. a very, very, I mean, a great name. But I do all these kind of projects that other wrestlers, you know, they say, well, I got a wife, I got kids, I've got my grandma, grandpa, my mom and dad. They wouldn't approve of me doing this. Listen, I'm in the entertainment business. I am not a wrestler. Wrestlers you find at the YMCA. True. Wrestlers you find at the college campus or the high school campus. I am in pro... Wrestling. Wrestling, which is entertainment. And I'm an entertainer. And you are the honky-tonk man. And, exactly. So, so, it's rock and, and roll. And I've always told my wife, never ask me how I make this money. <laughs> because believe me, fans, and you fellas out there, when your wife gets ready to divorce you, she don't care where you got the money, she's going to take half of it anyway. That's Unless right. you're Hogan, she got 75%. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. I heard about that. Oh yeah, brother. I heard about that. That's terrible. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, thoughts today on Bischoff telling that he was not a fan of your works. What do you think of that? Uh, you know, I was when he told me that, I was really shocked. I, I was taken back by it. Because I've never had someone who was gonna be my boss or who was gonna be the guy that hired me and fired me to tell me he wasn't right. a fan of my work. Normally a guy that hires you, the reason he hires you is because he he sees something of value in sure, you or something sure. you can bring to the company. And as soon as he said that, I, I mentioned, well, Eric, I, I, I hope I can change your mind. <laughs> and he said, well, the only reason I hired you was to keep Jimmy Hart quiet. He kept pestering me. I said, well, again, I hope I can change your mind. And I went as fast as I could, and we didn't have cell phones, 
I went as fast as I could to the payphone. I called my wife. I said, I'm not going to be here long. Right. And she said, oh, what's going on now? I said, well, <laughs> the guy that signs the checks and gives the contract says he's not a fan of mine. True. I said, I'm going to make the best of it and see what happens. And I stayed not long enough to learn the words to the song, like I said earlier. And when it all came down, he tried to pull some skullduggery, some shenanigans, and I politely told him to fuck off. Wow. Well, <laughs> Excuse my language. Yes. Uh, your thoughts on his son in TNA? I've never seen it, but I'm sure he's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Be I mean, honest. I, I mean the, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Oh my God. <laughs> That's true. But you know what? Let me, let me say this in, 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 in defense of the son. Uh, it's terrible if the son has to suffer... Uh, the sins of the father, True. of which uh, a young fellow named uh, Mark Scarpa, who was Chief J. Strongbow's son, suffered through so much humiliation when he came to the, the, the WWF when I was there and was treated very poorly by the other wrestlers and was, was uh, terrible things happened to him. They would cut his clothes up, lock his bag up and do things because they didn't like the, the man's father. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I would not want my son to have for, to have to suffer some of the bad things that I've done that people might want to pay my son back instead of calling me outside and saying, "Look, asshole, I'm ready to kick your ass." Don't take it out on my son. So, in, in defense of, of of Eric's son and of, of Hogan's daughter being on TV and things, uh, let's give him a chance and see what happens. Same with Flair's kids. I mean, both of them were terrible. They both ended up being terrible. But, it, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you, go for, you go from he's a piece of shit to we give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, at the end of the day, he's going to end up being a piece of shit. So, I mean, oh, that's true. I, I read the, I read the, what do they call the tarot, tarot cards? or The tarot the, cards, yeah. The tea, yeah. I, I threw the tea leaves down and said, this kid's a, he's going to be the shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, at least you're honest, right? Well, it's my, you know, it's here's the thing. It's yeah. one man's opinion. That's right. Honest and, 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 opinion. And believe me, I have an opinion just like I have a, a, right. a, a, a sphincter muscle back there, or, or what do you call it, an anus. Uh, mm -hmm. We all have one, and it's like an opinion. We all true. have one. That's true. Well, how long you haven't been in this New York area? Since uh, this trip, only like uh, one day. I came in to do a few things with the uh, ESS Promotions, my uh, favorite booker, Eric Sims, who, uh, who books a lot of the stars around here. And uh, we've had a, a, a fun-filled day and exciting and wrestled out in the rain and all those things that come with what I do. Have you been in this area recently? Not in the last uh, probably almost a year. Well, it's pleasure having you in this area. Well, well thank I, you for the interview is there, is there like, is there one more question you want to ask me? I mean, anything? Like, uh, what I do uh, when I'm not... That's after, right. What do you do when you're <laughs> what not What I wrestling? do after hours? Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> what are you doing? Like? I have not turned the television on in the, the last 24 hours that I've been yes. in this room. A lot of times I might spend four days in a room and never turn the TV on. Really? Uh, I don't watch a lot of television anymore. I don't spend a lot of time talking or texting people. Right. Uh, so what I, do you do after I was in a hotel? I, 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 I usually masturbate. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you busy. I should have asked that. Right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but no, uh, no I, 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 you know, I... I, I I watch a CNN a little bit, catch up on the news, and, and that's about it. I mean, uh, by the time I usually come in from Phoenix and come all the way across the country on a five-hour trip, and I get here 8, 9 o'clock at night by 11, I have my six-pack of beer, I'm in bed, and then I'm up, and Eric, Eric Sims has me up at early in the morning. We're off and gone and all day and then do something like this until the wee hours in the morning, and I leave tomorrow. It's a six-hour trip back home. I'm home for three days and then I head off again to uh, somewhere else. That's right, back to the, on the road. But you know what, I love what I do and I love being on the road and uh, my children at home, they don't know where I am tonight or today. They see my bags and Dad, when are you leaving? Uh, tomorrow. Uh, do, uh, do we need to take you to the airport? Sure. Uh, when are you back? Uh, I'll be back next Monday. Okay, so 
That's what, what, what do you have coming up next week or so? Oh, I'm going gonna... off to Minnesota okay. and Wisconsin. Then I'm going to, I got a thing at, at a rock festival in Chicago. Oh. Uh, That's weekdays? On the weekends. Uh, this, these are all Friday, Saturday, Sunday type things. And then I go to Winnipeg, Canada for a six day tour, which will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wow. Monday. And then I'm back home to do something else. And I mix in wrestling with comic book conventions now. Yes, comic I do the comic mm -hmm. book conventions when I have a, a weekend off. I have one coming up in, in Vancouver at the Vancouver Comic Con. Then I have the Tucson Comic Con. Uh, I mix in about four or five of those a year. They're pretty good. I they, like they've those. done really I well like for those. wrestling, uh, and, and I'm glad that, that yes. I got involved with them. They're not easy days, yeah. let me tell you, but, but to have to sit there for 10 hours at a table and up and down when people yes. come to, to say hello and get a photograph, but uh, that's, I mean, it all comes with what we call the territory. That's true. That's true. When I have a bad booking, you know what my wife says, I come home and I complain. Or I call on the phone and say, this was terrible, it was out in the rain, blah, 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 <laughs> or the ring broke, or this guy stiffed me on my money. She says, you booked it. <laughs> and you know what? I said, <laughs> you're right. True. She's then, always right. And then if I bitch about, you know, I'm so tired of this, I'm getting sick of it, she says, it's the life you chose. Yep, and smart it's woman. It's true. It's the life I chose. And I book all my do all my bookings, and if if one doesn't work out like it should, I booked it. That's right. There all, <laughs> there's always something that you know. Not everything goes well, right? But yes, and uh, but I love doing these kind of things that you guys are doing, and uh, and and really uh, uniquely different type of interviews than I've normally done. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me. Nice having you, sir. Thank you. Hungry, oh. uh, Rita Faltiano, and the other girl was Shy Love, who is, they were both, they've both been in over 400 films, extremely professional, but after about two or three hours, and we were on the set for 10 hours that day, I was really tired of watching uh, two porno stars, but uh, I had a wonderful time doing that, and I've done multiple, multiple, you know, jet, strip clips. I'm going to be like a sheriff or a bodyguard of of some zombies or something so okay. you know I, i'm always out there trying to look for something new and different and and uh there's no boundaries out there that, that no ties that bind me to not <laughs> doing whatever i do cool which means anything that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh, what other projects you're involved yeah hey i got a special special guest gina geneva she had a lot of requests. I did a little video with her and so I'm gonna give you what you wanted. Here's your request. Gina Geneva, nokfabin.com. Hello everyone, here I am. I have a few questions for Honky Tonk Man and the first one will be uh, I heard you have two independent movie projects coming up. Can you elaborate on those? I just finished one in uh, Chicago and it's called Executive Ranks. I don't really know what it's all about or I've not seen the final cut and final product. Uh, it's uh, produced and directed by a, a pretty good independent, independent film director, uh, John Wesley Norton. I have another one in the works in Denver where I... Well, besides wrestling. <laughs> well, gosh. Uh, I've done porno pro wrestling. Interesting. Uh, and I was not. Yeah, I was not in, in. I was not the porno guy at all. I was only. I only did commentary with two very, very, very professional ladies out of L.A. and out of the porn industry. One was from uh, Budapest.